Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. You're joining me, Brandon Flash, with my 2023 Tesla Model Y all-wheel drive. This is the cheapest Model Y that you can buy in the US market, and we're going to be doing the 10% road trip challenge in this car to see how well it does and to simulate road trip conditions and how well it performs for charging and range. <laughs> Like I said, some of you may know me. I have my own YouTube channel covering my EV experience. I've had quite a few different EVs, Rivian, Polestar, ID4, Model S 70D, and most recently, this Model Y all-wheel drive. So this is the new Austin, Texas built 4680 battery pack with the structural battery pack, Model Y. It's the cheapest one you can buy. It starts around $47,000. I have some options like the white interior and the blue exterior paint, but I have the base wheels, which means it's effectively the cheapest Model Y you can buy aside from those things, but the paint and interior color don't affect the range or charging performance. But we're at 10% state of charge. We're at a version three Tesla supercharger, uh, and we're going to get plugged in. We're going to charge for exactly 15 minutes from the point that the contactors in the battery pack click so that the power starts flowing. And then we're going to drive at 80 miles per hour on the interstate. And the reason we're doing this is to simulate kind of real world road trip conditions. You wanna roll in as low as you possibly can. Most people, for comfort levels, that's around 10%. I might go down to single digits, but most people don't. Uh, and then for a large part of the country, you're driving at 70 plus miles per hour, which is why we decided on 80 miles per hour, or why Kyle decided on 80 miles per hour for this test. Because we think that that really does simulate kind of a real world road trip experience that you're hopping from charger to charger, charging for that 15 minutes. That's about most people's tolerance for a charging stop um, without feeling annoyed by it. That's about the time to run in, use the restroom, grab a snack, stretch your legs for a moment, whatever you want to do, uh, and then get right back on the road and repeat again. So this is a loop style test. It's not a perfect loop, but it should be close enough. We're going to be running in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, and let's get this test started. I'm at 10% state of charge uh, and I'm going to get plugged in. We'll start a timer for 15 minutes and then I'll show you uh, as it starts ramping charging. Uh, and I'm actually going to be recording a zero to 100% charging curve for analysis after we get back from this test. So definitely if you're interested in that, check out my channel for that content, uh, as well as just my overall ownership experience with this car. I have about 7,500 miles on it and I've had it just over a month and a half. So definitely piling on the miles. All right, so we're getting plugged in. Like I said, this is a version three supercharger. You can tell by the lack of the silver collar there. And then I have my watch going here to start a timer as soon as that goes green. There we go, contactors are going and timer is started. So let's take a look, see how it's doing. So it's ramping up 200 kilowatts, 211. I've got uh, test lax down here. You can see charging current. So it went up pretty high peak and then it's already dropping down. You've got your battery power here. And then this state of charge is going to be different than what's on the screen up here. And that's totally normal uh, because that is the true battery state of charge. Whereas this is the available without the buffer factored in state of charge. So we're going to run this for 15 minutes, see what we get up to. I think it'll get up to 60 or so percent. And then we're going to be doing a loop style test on the ring road of Charlotte. Uh, which should allow for pretty good uh, speeds and consistent speeds. So a couple of things worth mentioning with this Model Y. So as I said, this is the 4680 battery pack uh, that's structural. So there's actually a giant hole in the body uh, and the seats actually mount to the floor. If you haven't, check out the uh, Munro Live videos. They dismantled one of these. It's pretty wild. Also worth noting that this vehicle, rather than maxing out at 250 kilowatts like the long range vehicles, at least as of right now, it maxes out at 230 kilowatts. There is a chance that Tesla will open this up in the future. So it's worth noting that we are on software 2023.26.7. So in case Tesla decides to change the charge curve in the future, hopefully they do and open it up more because I think this charge curve could be a lot more aggressive. Um, but this vehicle is rated for 279 miles of driving range at EPA test cycle. Uh, and this has the 19 inch Gemini wheels and I do have the covers on. I also did inflate the tires to manufacture recommended pressure at cold, which is 42 PSI. Um, so we should get kind of ideal conditions. It's a bit toasty out. Uh, it's I think 87 degrees outside, but the sun is down. So 
We're not going to be getting a lot of that thermal load from the heat. Uh, we're going to be running the air conditioning at 68 to 72. Uh, I tend to run a little bit hot, so I'm going to be leaving it at 68, but um, we're still charging along here. We're up to 27% with just uh, under 10 minutes left. So I think we're on track to be getting about 60%. It's doing 117 kilowatts at 27% right now. I'll see you guys as soon as we're done charging. Two other things worth noting, the supercharger is relatively empty. There are only two or three other cars here at this eight stall supercharger. So we should be able to be getting full power. And I'm looking at the charge curve and having put about 7,500 miles on this car, uh, I'm pretty familiar with the curve at this point. So we're getting normal speeds. And we're also leaving the climate control on while we're charging because that is representative of normal road trip behavior because you don't typically wanna let the car get toasty while you're charging if you're running into use the restroom or get a snack. And here we're at 33% with uh, just under, just over seven minutes remaining. Uh, here you can see the odometer, so 7,559 miles. And you can see how that is designated as Model Y. It doesn't show long range, it doesn't show performance, anything like that, it just is Model Y. Uh, we'll also go to the trips here. So we're gonna reset this since Nashville trip, just got back from road trip, I'll be posting that video soon. So we're gonna name this 10%. Percentage sign. There we go. Just like that. So that way that will be reset. And then we'll uh, be ready to go as soon as this gets to zero and we unplug. And we just crossed 15 minutes, so we're unplugging. If that wants to stay there. Let's see, uh, my watch is going off there. Let's see what we got up to. So we got up to 49%. I'm just gonna go ahead and reset that trip again. You can see the battery is pretty toasty, 55 degrees uh, max brick temp and 35 kilowatt hour remaining. Uh, and it looks like it is actively cooling the battery or somewhat. So the coolant target is slightly above the max brick temp, but the coolant temp inlet is below the max brick temp. So it is cooling the battery with the coolant flow, but it's also not heating it. Uh, so I've set just a random spot just to get me onto the interstate here. So we're heading uh, east and then we're just going to be going as far as I can. So 49% is 137 rated miles. But if you're familiar with Tesla's, you know that that's not reality. So let's get to it. Just so you can see, it's a pretty darn short drive onto the interstate. Uh, and we're going to be taking it pretty easy until we get onto the interstate. And then we'll be merging just like a normal person would up to 80 miles per hour. Well, it seems that 80 miles per hour GPS verified is about 81 and a half miles per hour on Tesla uh, speedometer. So I have it locked in at 82. I'm sure there'll be a few points that I'll have to slow down for. Uh, so it'll all even out and it'll be close enough uh, because 82 is slightly too fast and that rounds up to 81, but uh, 81 on Tesla speedometer actually shows as 79 miles per hour on GPS. So got to just kind of pick your poison. I have climate set at 68. Um, I don't have it set to the supercharger on nav quite yet. I'll probably set that at about the turnaround point. Um, but yeah, we're just going to cruise along. We'll drive about halfway and then we'll flip around uh, and then we'll count it as soon as it crosses from 11% to 10% because that's what the standard has been decided as. Uh, and so that should be the turnaround point about 29% or so. Well, we're at 29% state of charge. Uh, we've driven 36 miles so far. Uh, we're gonna be turning around in about two and a half miles. Um, and then I just added a random waypoint on the way back to the supercharger, but uh, that's gonna be putting us right at 10% arrival back to the supercharger. And that's about, uh, I think like 37 miles back, but I'll give you guys the final number. Um, and then once we're turned around, I'll also show you uh, kind of how we're looking. We are at 28%. 38 miles driven, 347 miles per hour. So that's like 2.8, 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour, somewhere around there. Uh, and then we're turning around. So I'll give you the mileage back to the supercharger once we're on our way and it's no longer trying to route me a different way that's a little bit shorter around the city of Charlotte. So as promised, we're at 27%. We just got back in the interstate. Uh, it's still trying to route me a different way, but we'll go that way. And it's about 37 miles back to the supercharger and it was projecting 
uh, 10% arrival a moment ago, but we'll see uh, what it goes back up to. We are down to 20%. We've got 22 miles to go to the supercharger where it's predicting a 10% arrival. And our efficiency is improving very slightly as we keep going, but uh, it's not looking too great right now. It looks like about 76 miles is what we're gonna end up at, but we will see uh, as we roll over to 10%. And we just crossed 10%. So we're at 71 miles driven, which is really not a great result. So I'm gonna keep driving a little bit so I can get this down to 0% actually, um, but I'll see you at the charging station and we'll kind of discuss the results there. So this is wild. We're at 0% right now. No power cut at all. Like here you can see, it's still showing 5% state of charge on Tesla X because that's there, but we should have a power cut at 0% displayed, but we don't. Very weird. We've now gone about four miles past zero, showing negative 2% arrival, but there's still energy in the pack, which we can see in the buffer. Uh, if you wanna see the full charge curve from zero to 100%, definitely uh, check out my channel. Well, we're back at the supercharger, ran it all the way down to 0%, now recording that zero to 100 charging curve. Um, but overall, I'd say I'm pretty disappointed with the results. Uh, for a basis of comparison, Ryan's Model 3 rear-wheel drive with the LFP battery pack, which is the cheapest new Tesla you can buy, which is right about 30 after tax credit, uh, that actually did 106 miles in the 10% challenge, which is way better than mine, about 35 miles um, longer. And the Model Y long range with the 20-inch uh, induction wheels, not even the Gemini Aero wheels, uh, actually did 88 or 98 miles when Kyle tested it. So definitely uh, not the road trip king here, but that's driven by the charging curve, not necessarily by the vehicle itself. I think uh, if the Model Y was uh, had a more aggressive charge curve on the 4680 battery pack, then it would be a lot better of a road trip vehicle. So comment down below if you have any thoughts on this. Otherwise, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you on the next one.